Hello again. Quickly following on from the video where we gained the ability to die, if you can class that as an ability, it's not one you want. Um, we're going to set it up so that we can throw events, use custom events to make something happen and respond to it. In this particular case, we're going to throw an event when we get game over, which is why I'm at this point in the class, so that the main timeline can know to go to a game over screen. Because at the moment, there's no way this main timeline can know if we've got game over really, unless we cheat. But this is an interesting way to do it, so that's how we're going to do it. In the demo version of the game <coughs> that I, um, I showed you, I've used events for various other things. They're quite useful if you can wrap your head around how they work. Uh, one example was there's a, a buff or a perk that retaliates against enemy ships when they hit you. So that listens out for a hit event that the turret throws in my demo. So when the turret gets hit, it throws an event and that particular buff retaliates, it shoots at the ships. So let's look at actually making an event, making an event and dispatching it or throwing it. So we'll, um, we'll make an event. And to do that, just make a variable. I'll call it ev for event. We'll type event. So we're just going to use the plain old event. We might later on make our own take on it. And I'm going to do new event. Open brackets and you can see that it takes a bunch of um, parameters. And only the first one is necessary. The rest have default values. So, as you can read there, it needs a type, and that comes in the form of string. So far, we've used things like event.enterFrame. And they are just, they're just strings. If, if I delete up to the dot and type it again, you can see that these ones that it's providing us with are actually just strings, which means all they are are things like this, enter frame. That's pretty much all event.enterFrame is. It's just a, a shortcut to a string. So I'm going to just use one I've made up. We'll just call it game over. So we're going, going to throw a new event or dispatch a new event with the type of game over. That alone won't work. We have to tell Flash to announce this event. And that is known as dispatching. That's why I keep saying it. So we're going to dispatch this event. We'll use the, the function dispatch event, it goes blue. If you open brackets, it'll tell you what information it needs, and it just needs an event. So I'm going to give it ev. So we've made an event and we've dispatched it. Save that class, go to our main timeline, and we can now listen out for that event. So I'm going to click frame three. Going to select the level because we need to name it. If we're going to use it, we need to give it an instance name. So I'm going to call it the level. It's got an instance name. I'm going to hop into the code for this particular keyframe, go to the actions, and underneath, I'm going to listen out for a game over event on the level. So we'll do the level dot add event listener. And here we put in our custom event, which was game over, and put a function to respond with. So we'll call we'll call it do game over. Yeah. Underneath that, we'll make the function do game over. So function do game over. Responding to an event, it's still a normal event because we, we made an event. You can see that it's imported it up top as well. We're going to move that in a second and we're going to move the function just to be cleaner. All I want to do is trace event received just so we know that it's actually worked. Save that, test it. Hopefully it goes to plan. So when we die now, we should get event received traced out. And we do. So we can see that this, this event here in the level class that we've dispatched has been acknowledged by the main timeline and we've traced out event received as a result. So what we could do instead of instead of this event received, well we can leave that there. If we just play, play the main timeline. Uh, 
and stick in a makeshift game over screen here. Let's let's make a new keyframe. Delete the content. Should have made a blank keyframe. And I'll just put some text. I'll put game over. Make it static text and make it a bit bigger. Game over. Doesn't have to be neat and tidy just yet. Not massively important. We'll probably change it. And we'll stop on the frame as well. So stop. Let's try that. So now when we die, we should hop along to a game over screen. And we do. It seems to work fairly well. Just going to refactor it a little bit. We've got a document class here that we're not making the right lot of use of. So I'm going to cut this function. I'm going to cut that out. Go to my document class, my game AS, and I'm going to paste it in here. We'll tell it where it is. And just organize it a bit better, tab these in. I'm going to delete the trace, don't need that anymore. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go back to my game, back to frame 3, get this import, cut that from there, we don't want it there. We want that in the document class as well, so let's paste that there. Save that, save the game, just check that it works. Made a game. Make sure we die. Good stuff. So that works. Problem is we don't have access to the score. When we're on this game over screen, the level no longer exists. So we, ne we need some way of knowing what score we got. Further problem is that the level is not fully accessible from here anyway. We could put the level.score but I want to make use of these events that we're throwing. I want to just show you what you can do with events really. So I'm going to make my own event class. So I'm going to go File, New and we'll go straight for the class and I'm going to call this a level event. Okay, so we've got a new class. It's not going to go in a package. We do need to import some stuff. We need to import flash.events.event. .event. And that's probably it, really, because we want to extend the event. So we're going to have public class level event extends event. So let's comment it. Make a own custom event class. The constructor code, we want to use the constructor from the event class. So we're going to put super, which accesses the, the class that we're extending, the super class it's known as. Open brackets, and we're just going to pass the type which we don't actually have yet. Our level event is going to take a type, so our type, and that'll be a string. So we're going to access our superclass by passing type into it. That looks okay at the moment. It's no better than a standard event yet though, so we need to customize it in a way that lets us make use of the score property of our level, for example. So I'm going to give it a variable here of a, a public var public public var called score and it's going to be um, an int and when I make a level event I want it to take that piece of information so we'll have um, we'll have s and that's going to be an int and under this we'll have score equals s. So in order to make a level event you've got to pass a type and you've got to pass a score.
let's just save that class save it into where we're doing everything into the space game save as <coughs> fingers crossed this works it's gone a bit of a roundabout way go to our level we're going to edit the event that we dispatch now so instead of being an event it's going to be a level event instead of being an event there it's going to be a level event and instead of just taking game over it's going to take game over and score you can see that it's detected what our level event needs so I've passed it a type and a score save that go back to the document class in fact yeah we do need to go to the document class this is no longer taking an event, this is taking a level event. Save that. Go to the main timeline, go to frame 3, just check here. That looks okay. Let's just check it works, there's probably going to be something wrong. Oh no, that worked! It's a miracle! But we didn't make use of the score, so we need to do that now. Let's see, where are we? Um, on the main timeline, sorry, not on the main timeline, in the document class, if we make a variable here, we'll call it last score, make it private, private var last score int. Use this to remember the last score. And in the do game over, we're going to make use of the score property that goes into our custom level event. So before we play, before we play the timeline, we're going to set last score to be the score from our custom level event. Last score equals e because that's the the argument name for our level event dot score. And you can see that it's found it for us. So we can be fairly confident that it's going to work. I'm going to save that. I'm going to go to my main timeline, to my game over screen. I'm going to make a new text field. Oops, sorry. Make a new text field. Make it dynamic. So dynamic text. Let's call it score text for now and it's set to the project font it's centered so that's okay and on this keyframe I'll put score text dot text equals last score save it and test it and pray oh, doesn't like it oh it's because it, it's an int so we need to make it a string. We could do all sorts of random stuff. The fastest way is just to put two quotes and a plus. That turns a number into a string. Guy, and we get our score. Magic, magic, magic. We've taken the score property from this level class, put it into a custom event that we've just made called level event, We've dispatched that event, which in turn has, by means of our timeline here, this event listener we were using, we've listened out for that custom event, called a function in our document class called do game over, which has made use of the score property in our custom event, then has played to the next frame of our timeline and used that score value. So we've taken it from a level which is not even on this frame, doesn't exist anymore, but we've still got access to the score. Maybe not the easiest way we could have done that, but it's very useful to understand how events work like that. Custom events are great and I don't see many people using them, so you're in the privileged few. Let's see, what can we do? Another minute or so just to add to it. Let's make our level event a bit better. Instead of using a string type will um, do what all the other event classes do. So in here I'm going to make a, a constant, a static constant called game 
over. And that's going to equal the string game over. And because it's static, it belongs to the class. We don't have to make an instance of level event to use this. If you remember static values from uh, one of the earlier videos, if you don't, go and back and watch it because they're useful as well. A constant means it can't be changed. Once it's set here, it's, it's set in stone, it's constant. Save that class. Go to the level. And instead of putting game over here, I'm going to put level event dot game over, whoops, properly, save that, do the same on my timeline, just so it's in a familiar format, because we're used to putting something like event dot enter frame here, aren't we? But now we can have level event dot game over. Why do I keep doing that? Save it and test it. <clears throat> and hope it works. Perfect. So we've set up our own level event class which works just as a, a normal event would with the added bonus of keeping track of our score. And as I've mentioned there are different ways of doing that. There are more simple ways of doing it but being able to use custom events is useful. So I'm happy with that and I'll see you later. Goodbye.